Welcome back to our behind the scenes look at Jane Goldman Investigates, the diary of Jane Goldman's investigations into the paranormal. But did the paranormal come looking for Jane before she went looking for it? We had a really weird thing where I was just filming a piece of camera for the uh, beginning of the ghosts episode. Um, and when I was watching him back with my husband, he went, Oh, that's clever. Did you mean to do that? I went, what meant to do what? He went, that man behind you. And <laughs> we played the tape back. And there'd be nine of us on the team. No one had seen anyone because we'd have stopped and done it again. There's a man walks into frame right behind me. We'd stopped filming a couple of times when people had walked past. So we were all quite alert for people wandering past. And none of us saw that one. But not every episode was that spooky. Jane Goldman's investigations range from the sublime to the ridiculous. We looked for a missing poodle in Reading. <laughs> Using psychometry. Misty the poodle has been missing for three weeks. Dominic had a strong feeling that a nearby mobile home site was linked to Misty's disappearance. I certainly didn't have any better ideas, so we checked it out. I was just wondering, we're looking for a lost dog. You haven't seen a little poodle, have you? We were going nowhere fast. I didn't know about Dominic, but my psychic mojo definitely wasn't working. It was awful because I so wanted to find this missing poodle for the lovely ladies who'd lost it, and it all went howlingly wrong. You know, Misty's here, OK? It's just a case of when we find her. Also had a howling embarrassment during dowsing. Tried to douse my way out of Long Leap Maze. Have we been here before? <laughs> that was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Several hours later, I had to be rescued by a member of staff. <laughs> Not a great deal uncovered there, then. But far be it from Jane to give up so easily, no matter what the spirit world threw at her. Yeah, just broke my nail. <laughs> oh, my God. Why are they letting me do this? This is insane. Yeah, I think someone... <laughs> we have a boy. <laughs> I've got to go into a man's back garden. He knows from some kind of old Bill of Rights that there is um, a well somewhere in his back garden, doesn't know where. Uh, I've got to find it with my dowsing rod. And I thought, oh, fine, you know, that'll be fine. Except I turn up as heavy industrial machinery. I look good. <laughs> Why is this man letting me, an inexperienced person with a dowsing rod, in fact, anyone with a dowsing rod, Dig up his back garden. Are you a believer in Dales? I don't know. If you find the well, I might be. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you what happened. But it wasn't all fun and games. As Jane discovered when she turned up some remarkable results during her investigations into psychometry. In psychometry, I think the idea is Ooh. you touch an object or a building and uh, through doing that, you're able to garner information about its history. Psychometry was, in fact, the first programme we did in this series, and I think we had a view that was influenced by a lot of things we'd seen, and um, probably more influenced by the special effects and Hollywood version of uh, psychic events, but life's not like that, you know. Jenny Bright is one of Britain's best-known psychometrists. Today, she's come over to give me my first practical demonstration, there was a place where we'd gone, which was a hotel in Derby. And at the top of these stairs, I suddenly felt a rush of vertigo. When I touched the wall, I did feel really dizzy for no apparent reason, and I almost got a sense of kind of looking over this parapet thing and then sort of stumbling backwards a bit. I'm feeling a huge sense of vertigo. Did you feel ill because you're dizzy? I felt or... sort of lightheaded. And apparently that was the exact spot where um, hotel guests had reported saying, and apparition of a bloke looking over the parapet and then stumbling backwards in a dizzy sort of way. The feeling I'd had was very weird and very powerful and it just came from nowhere as soon as I stood by the stair rail. Had I just taken the stairs too fast? Or did it mean I was picking up some energy from a past event? But what would happen when Jane went looking for the real thing? 
Tonight, I'm on the trail of ghosts. Inevitably, Jane's investigations became more and more bizarre as she entered the world of the hunter and the hunted on the trail of ghosts. There are groups of people who basically spend, mainly spend all night ghost vigils, um, staying awake, and they use a kind of mixture of, you know, high-tech and low-tech equipment. I mean, it's stuff people will be maybe familiar with a little bit from watching Most Haunted. Yeah, when you've got the red light working, can you um, kill the big light in the roof behind you? So how useful was technological equipment? One of the places we were in, um, we were trying an experiment. We made sure that the person who had experience of the castle um, didn't tell me or the parapsychologists we were with which rooms people had reported things in. Kira and I knew no details about the disturbing hauntings here. And there was one room that I just felt had a really nasty atmosphere, a kind of weird atmosphere almost like being watched. If I had to plump for one, I would say that one. That would be room 100. And the parapsychologist, it turned out, when he'd been measuring the temperature in that room, and he's a massive sceptic and he was laughing because uh, his equipment had just gone so wrong that the temperature said minus 18. And it turned out that that was the exact room that the uh, woman who had previously lived there, she and her sister used to feel that they were being watched in that room. They used to see an apparition of a man standing lurking by the wardrobes. They used to sleep in that room, not for long. <laughs> and he walked and he walked purposefully and I knew he was coming to get me. And I got down on my knees and I asked for the highest to come in and save me. Temperature drops are one thing, but how about actually recording it on film? In this one particular incident, the medium we were using was talking about a little girl being here, and um, we didn't pick it up at all on the camera. What we're going to do is let you take a photo because. We can ask her, and I'm asking her if she's happy to have a photo taken. My hands are shaking. <laughs> okay. We did take some stills, and surprise, surprise, just where she's saying, there is an image. There is an image on the still. Right where Angela said that the little girl was standing, and when she told me to take a photo, look. <laughs> and that is really spooky. We didn't sleep in here for very long because it got a bit nasty. There is something going on, and that's kind of quite exciting when that happens. I've got a, got a strange feeling about that one. You just suddenly think to yourself, there's something going on here. I don't know, quite know what it is. And there's this great moment, you see it in most of the shows, where the penny drops for Jane. It's a great moment, it's, it's, a, it's a, one of the high points of the show, where all of a sudden it's there, it's happening, and you just think to yourself, there's something in this. So after a year of work and study, has Jane Goldman Investigates answered the questions it set out to? I feel that we've succeeded in our aim, which was just to try and get a far more focused and in-depth look at some of these subjects than I'd seen done in documentary form before. Yeah, I'll do that as a wide shot because then um, we could either use the sink with it there or... Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Thank you. Often, um, on location, I'm so bound up in seeing what the cameras are doing, seeing what's going on. I actually don't know what's going on. So when I get back into the editor room and I look at, look at things, you, you do find things that you didn't expect to see. You do find really exciting moments and things that are going on that just passed you by because you're so busy focused on, on the kind of mechanics of making the thing happen. So, yeah, it's exciting for me when I sit back and look at it afterwards as well. <laughs> that was Very nice. You're going to come up from around this corner. Oh, it's not all out there. It's all, some of it is actually remarkably grounded and actually yeah. remarkably useful. I mean, really looking at some of these things as useful everyday tools that actually benefit people rather than just, ooh, isn't this weird? Because there's lots of to and fro and technical, we can stop and start. You know, it really opened my eyes to a, a lot of things. It turned out to be a really odd emotional experience, this show. I've learned a lot and hopefully everything I've learned, the viewers will learn as well. Um, so that's been fascinating. I mean, it's been a revelation for me as well because there are a lot of subjects where 
uh, I think I didn't really fully understand how the people who did them approached them, especially in the areas of kind of clairvoyance, divination, tarot, things like that. It really confounded my expectations of actually, you know, what an incredibly complex and really quite intelligent art these things are. It's a brilliant mix of so many genres this show. You've got a great personality. Fans of the paranormal will love it anyway. And you've got a really strong story in every single show. And people will have a sense that they can go on that journey with Jane, examine the evidence, and make up their own minds about what they believe or don't believe at the end of it. Because we're not ramming it down people's throats. We're saying, have a look at this, see what you think. We think it's fantastic. We know you're going to enjoy it. Whether you believe it or not, that's your own decision. Cut.